hey, what do I, I will buy you the, Le the LeBron outfit if you, if I'm either I'm gonna get him for you or I'm gonna make a GoFundMe, like I gotta get you in that outfit. Thank you, thank you, it is Christmas time. I'm Andrew Edwards and you're watching Gear Live and the AirPods Max were the big December surprise from Apple. Now all across YouTube, I'm sure you've seen your favorite tech creators giving their opinions on how the AirPods Max work, what they like, what they change about them, but have you ever wondered how we actually test the headphones, what songs and media do we use to determine if we like how a pair of headphones sounds. Well, in this video, I have gathered several of my super fashionable tech creator friends to tell you all about their methods for how they test headphones, their thoughts on the AirPods Max, and near the end of the video, we all share what we feel are the best songs to use to test any headphones in general, but also the AirPods Max in particular, because as my guy, Sam puts it. Who doesn't want to talk more? I'm not allowed to curse, don't put this in the video about AirPods Max. All right, I'm gonna let people introduce themselves, but just so you know, you'll want to stay to the end for the most fire AirPods Max rap track from the one and only C-Kid. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. What's going on everyone? I'm Gadgets Boy. Jonathan Morrison, how you doing man? I'm Jeff, also known as El Jefe Reviews. What is up YouTube? My name is CJ from CJ Unplugged. What's up Andrew? What's going on everyone? It's Justin here. Hey guys, Thunder E here. Renee Ritchie, how are you doing? What's going on y'all? I'm Tech Me Out and big thank you to Andrew for having me a part of this video. Thanks so much for having me. I feel honored. This is a blessing. What type of content do I personally like listening to when I'm using headphones like the AirPods Max? Like what? are some of the things that I'm listening out for to determine if it's a good pair of headphones. So I've actually never really examined my process until uh, Andrew asked me this question. And then I was like, oh, what, what do I actually do? But I've realized my process has been kind of consistent since I've started testing audio. And we are talking about the AirPods Max and exactly what I did to test this, my process. I look at what the vendor says, what the company says, and I try to fact check that because I want to make sure that this is what they're saying. Does it even meet what you know what they have set up? Does it meet the expectations that they have set? And then I try to translate that to what a customer should expect, regardless of what the manufacturer said. Like what kind of experience they deserve to have. And I try to find a review that bridges that gap. All right. So for me, when I'm testing headphones, I want to focus on three things. I care about the soundstage. I care about being able to separate the different aspects of the music or video that I'm watching or listening to. And then the last one is the feeling, and that one is extremely subjective. When you hear your favorite song or a song that you just love in a certain way, when you close your eyes and just really pay attention, with some headphones and some audio gear, it's like you're just listening to a track, and with others, it's able to replicate it in such a way that you get kind of a deeper experience. And I did notice a lot of people use that word when talking about the AirPods Max, it's about the experience. As a content creator slash musician, when it comes to audio and video, I pay maybe way too much attention to what's going on because it's very important to storytelling. What does that mean to you? You're not an audiophile. You obviously own headphones. You work with pretty high-end audio equipment, but the lack of being an audiophile, what does that mean to the average person? So, I, and I don't really don't want to offend anybody here, but it, like it, the audiophile has become this weird thing where Someone does a review in there and people will say, I'm, I'm waiting for the audio file review. Where like, if we do a camera review, it's not like, oh, I'm waiting for the Vogue photographer review. Or if we do like, if we're testing data, like I'm not, I'm waiting for the radio engineer review. It's just for some reason, like audio files, audiophilia has gotten like the self-selected elitist sort of thing to it. And at first I was hesitant. And then I forget if it was El Jefe or, or somebody in the audio community said, just give us your opinion. You know, that's the important thing. Now, first for me, I wanna say I try songs that I both love and I'm very familiar with, as well as songs that I don't necessarily like, and I'm not listening to them because I don't like them. I'm listening to them because they are good sonically for testing. So for example, I am not someone who is super into like heavy metal, but I do have metal songs on my playlist because they're specific metal songs that are great for testing headphones. So the main thing I find myself listening to when it comes to using, you know, my AirPods Max or really any pair of headphones is primarily music, followed by probably like YouTube videos, audible books, podcasts, 
then movies last. I tend to watch movies on my phone the most when I'm traveling, but outside of that, I'm not consuming them as much. I'll generally go for like my favorite stuff first. What I've really liked using them for is video editing. I find that there isn't any delay when it comes to chopping some audio and stuff, because that seems to be the issue a lot of times with wireless headphones. I already know what I like. I feel like I have a good pair of wired headphones. Convenience is probably the, the next thing, right? And when it comes to headphones, what matters to me is, are these headphones in the way of storytelling or are they helping the storytelling by giving you the audio the way it's supposed to be heard? Although I love hip hop, rap, and pop music, which tends to have a lot of mids and bass, I like to listen to classical, I like to listen to classic rock, you got Motown, jazz, even podcasts, just to hear what that stuff sounds like in these, because honestly, the sound profiles of different headphones showcase different types of genres sometimes better than others. When you, when you get an experience that you've never gotten before, I think that to me is where you start to get to the big selling points. I like to use tracks that have a lot of range in them so that I can hear different things from my highs, my lows, as well as also my mids. And when I'm testing headphones, I like to use a wide variety of genres to really figure out exactly what a set of headphones brings to the table. And then once I listen to things that I, I know I like, I know what to pay attention to. I know my favorite parts, I know what's gonna hit when, then I can shift my attention to something I don't know nearly as well, to hear the things that I might not have picked up in my favorite song because I'm listening to it nearly fresh or not in a way that I critically listen to music. One thing I like to listen for is bass. I don't like a lot of bass, but I do want to hear emphasis in the bass line. But I also want to have very clear highs and mids as well. I also like to observe the audio quality at different volume levels, so I don't want a bunch of distortion if I have to crank the volume up. What I look for in terms of uh, range in the headphones is how does it give me that feeling that I am getting as close to what the artist is trying to give me. So when it comes to instrumentals with Hans Zimmer, am I, do I feel like I'm getting into the action? Does the music take me away from just listening to transporting me in? Someone like me who's really in the sound, I own audio interfaces, the Apogee Duet and Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 so that I can listen more critically. I was able to plug in these AirPods Max using this cable to edit videos and also analyze audio that was uncompressed. Basically waveforms and AIFs, things that you would create in Logic, Pro Tools and so forth. A more critical listening experience. Things that matter to me at the source of the audio because it determines the audio quality. Then I look out for the actual music that I play to test soundstage, uh, the dynamic range and the frequency range as well. Uh, if I'm listening to Beat It, do I he hear Michael Jackson like he is recording in front of me? Can I hear him breathe and sing those notes. Those are the kinds of things that I am looking for, especially when it comes to audio, because those are the things that are very important in getting the exact pinpoint of what I'm trying to get. But I got a new tool here. This is worth checking out to help you repeat people at home during my review. This is called the 3DO binaural mic. There are actually one microphone in each ear, that's two mics. And what it does is it collects sound the way that you hear it. So in my review, people are gonna actually be able to hear what these sound like and judge for themselves instead of me telling them. So that way when I'm done listening to everything, I get a good idea of the overall sound profile for headphones. To me, what matters is, is there a balance? Do you hear things clearly? But not too clearly, by the way. I'm, I, I like a little, you know, I like a little sugar on my headphones when I'm listening for fun. I also like to test the comfort level, especially, you know, oftentimes wearing earrings and sometimes with different styles in my hair. Over ear headphones can sometimes be tricky. And the only complaint that I do have about them is that they are a little bit on the heavier side. So when you put these on your ear, because it is metal and the top being like a very well breathing material that is relatively light, it does pull down on the ear quite a bit. So I would say after like two hours, I have to take them off. We're kind of in this awkward stage with these where I'm not quite there yet because they sound great, spatial audio is awesome, but they're a little awkward in terms of transportation. As for comfort, for me personally, I don't have any issues with the AirPods Max from a weight perspective, which is something I've heard a lot of people say they do have an issue with. Now, I don't have hair and I don't have earrings, and I don't know if that might be part of why I don't have a problem, but I can wear the AirPods Max for hours on end, sitting right here at this desk. I can wear it for four or five hours, no problem at all. Obviously, head shapes, jewelry, hairstyles, ear shape, etc., are gonna be all different for different people. So I'm not saying that because they're comfortable for me, that means they'll be comfortable for you. But what I am saying is that for me, 
I have no problem with the weight of the AirPods Max at all. But whether or not it is really worth the price of $550, I'm still trying to figure out whether or not it really is. And when comfort is not what it's best at, um, that does make the decision a little bit tougher. Then you have to test the active noise cancellation transparency mode. So when it came to the transparency mode, I literally just kept the headphones on my ear, walking around the crib, you know what I mean? Seeing what I can hear and from where and how natural it could sound. The AirPods Max are so interesting to me because we're entering this era of computational audio where we've had these discussions about, oh, they're not, they're not like the Bose and they're not like my high-end uh, Sennheisers and they're really not. They're a new thing that seems like intent on taking MP3s, AACs over Bluetooth and giving you music that is music and audio that is way better than the signal quality alone would ever be able to do. If you are in on the Apple ecosystem and the stuff you're using is Apple because that's where the spatial audio and the adaptive EQ all kick in, I think then they are absolutely delivering. But I find that if I really need to concentrate on something, putting a pair of headphones on and just getting in the zone with the great noise cancellation is a really good feature to have. It's one thing to have the noise cancellation because I think the terms of noise cancellation king is probably up for debate. I don't think Apple's doing it best. They do it well enough. What else I then do to test voice is I listen to podcasts. So uh, Joe Rogan, for example, I listen to his podcast to hear audio and see how that works well with the pair of headphones that I've got. And if I was to put that to test with the pair of AirPods Max, I'd say it does all the job across the board really well. Now, besides listening to music, what I usually listen to is podcasts. Now, you don't need a $550 pair of headphones to listen to podcasts. But what I will say is listening to them on the AirPods Max is a nice experience because of the noise cancellation and the transparency mode. It's great for noise cancellation for when you really wanna focus on what people are saying in a podcast and you don't wanna be distracted by the outside world. And then the transparency mode is also great for when you're cooking something in the kitchen and someone's talking to you and you have to talk back to them. Or if you're walking outside, you kinda of have to hear your outside environment. When, you, when I use, maybe it's different for you, in ear headphones and I'm outside walking, I hear my steps quite loudly. And that's something I don't like a lot. With these, you don't hear that. And so, depends on the situation. I, I wanna make sure I'm actually hearing things. Uh, and you can, I, I listen to like spoken word stuff too, like audiobooks and podcasts, just to hear how intelligible pers like speech is and how distinct the different music is because sometimes, especially with older generation, less expensive headphones, everything was sort of muddied together and there was a bunch of things that you just never heard. And everybody remarks on that, you know, oh wow, I I'm listening to these headphones and I've heard parts of the song I never even knew existed. I would say if you're looking for a great pair of headphones to use with your Apple devices or on flights and a good level of cancellation, then this is definitely an option that I can recommend. Now it's time for our favorite music tracks. I've compiled all the recommendations you're about to hear into a playlist on both Apple Music and Spotify. Links to both of those will be down in the description below in case you want to listen to the same tracks that we use when we're testing headphones. Hit play on any of these songs, close your eyes, and really listen. And if you're listening through the AirPods Max, you'll be getting a fantastic experience. Two of my go-to tracks, one is gonna be Gray, Body Count. That is probably, I think, I've said this, one of their most underrated tracks. It's based off GTA, which is awesome. But their production is so insane. The low end that kicks in to just the little pieces of ear candy that maybe you wouldn't normally appreciate or hear with not great headphones. So things are coming from the left, from the right, and I just, I guess the overall space is what I appreciate with that track. I usually listen to like old school rap. I love Public Enemy, I love Chuck D. I love, you know, Eric B and Rakim. It's old enough that I don't feel like it was put like put through a studio machine the way a lot of modern music is. So I feel like, you know, there were actual human beings behind it, making it with the idiosyncrasies and everything behind it. Tears in Heaven by Eric Clapton. The guitar with the other string instruments in the background along with Eric Clapton's voice. Being able to just pick out everything in the nice soundstage. This is just a great test for headphones in general. And the genres of music that I typically lean towards would be like, you know, your old school R&B, like SWV, uh, Drew Hill, a little boys to men. Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, quick one, recent one, deep bass, bright synth, 
smooth vocals. Now, if I'm looking for bass response, I'm gonna use a song like Jill by Trey Songs. The chorus has this sub bass bass line that really brings that rumble. November Rain by Guns N' Roses. Just so good all around for testing. Of course, you have the guitar solo in the middle by Slash, but listen to the main vocals along with the instruments and how, again, you can just pick up everything individually. If you put the headphones on, close your eyes, the voice is separated as well. Again, great track for headphones. Also, if you really wanna give them a bass workout, try Nocturnal by The Midnight. That's another excellent track to test out some of that bass response. I love Pavarotti and I love like musicals and I love old school rock and I love pop. So I'll just, I'll try to pick some of what the most recent songs are, like whatever's on the top of the Apple Music list, because I figure that's what people are listening to. And then I'll try to find a bunch of classics. My Immortal by Evanescence. This is one of those just close your eyes and listen song. Haunting vocals, string instrumentals, mid song, the band comes in and changes the feeling instantly. It's all just start to finish really good. And one of my very favorite tracks is Michael Jackson's Beat It because it gives me that range. You've got the vocals from Michael Jackson. Uh, you've got, you know, you've got that bass guitar. You've got the drums cutting through all the way. So that stuff for me is really nice. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. There are so many different styles and subgenres in this one song that will push any headphone in multiple directions. It's hard to sound great for the entirety of Bohemian Rhapsody due to all the different genre changes and switches. If you find headphones that do sound good throughout the entire track, then those headphones are likely worth your money. I think one of the essential test tracks for me is David Bowie's A Space Oddity. I really love to listen to that track on a good pair of headphones. That song just plays with the stereo sound in a way that is really immersive and I can just close my eyes and get lost in that song. If I'm looking for mids and vocals, I'm gonna try out Santana, Corazón Espinado, beautiful track. Also, Fly Me to the Moon by Frank Sinatra, that smooth voice, the band behind him. I mean, you can really see how those vocals are coming into play here. Uh, another track I really like to listen to and a guilty pleasure of mine is Under Pressure by Queen and David Bowie, David Bowie making another appearance here. Uh, just another great song that I like to listen to, close my eyes in and just take a load off and relax. Like, I don't know, Kendrick Lamar for me, or some Glass Animals or something. And then I'll kind of make my way to some other music that's just more popular. Because there are some headphones. You listen to Halsey, for example. This is the experience I had. And it sounds fantastic. But then you listen to a rock song, it's not there. Old school songs really do this well for me, like Bob Marley. Uh, you can hear all the instruments, like the guitar playing, and when it's got trumpets playing as well, it does that. I also listen to Afro beats because, again, various instruments are in there, combined and blended well with uh, voice uh, in terms of singing the, the acoustic. All that stuff, I want to hear all that in detail. Another one you may want to try out is Morgan James's cover of Dream On with Postmodern Jukebox. With a dash like Maxwell or Anthony Hamilton, so I love my R&B. Classical scores from video game soundtracks. So recently I've been listening to a lot of the Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack. Uh, that just has an excellent score with tons of different tracks. They did an amazing job on it. And for one more track, if anybody wants it, there's um, Yamaguchi by Terra Jr. It starts out very like eerie, very wide and spacey. There's a little bit of like Beatles vibes and then it just kicks in with a sub that punches you in the face. Miss Fat Booty by Most Def. Hopefully YouTube does not bring this video down in the algorithm because I said fat booty, but the song and chorus are both driven by several samples of Anita Franklin's One Step Ahead from 1965 and is taken and turned into a hip hop track with the brilliant mind of Most Def. This song just has a pristine soundscape all around. Another uh, artist I like to use is Muse. The song Propaganda really strikes out well. Now, as far as treble clarity is concerned, I'm gonna be looking at one of my favorite artists, Selena. 
Tú Solo Tú or No Me Queda Más. Those two tracks have these beautiful strings and violins that come into play and really sells the emotion behind the track, but it really gives you an idea of how clear and how much airiness there is in a set of headphones. But I do also like to listen to rap, so, you know, I like some bass heavy songs, some Southern classics. In addition to R&B and rap, I also like to listen to gospel music. For stage and for imaging, usually I use live recordings. You could try Hotel California by the Eagles, the 1994 live recording on MTV. Dude, you really gotta try that out. I also like to use a lot of Foo Fighters as well. There's a lot of drums in there and some nice guitars as well. And then I tend to go into instrumentals, uh, a lot of Hans Zimmer songs, uh, because Hans Zimmer is just such a great artist. But my personal favorite there is One Winged Angel. <laughs> Well, that's no surprise if you're a Final Fantasy VII fan, that's definitely in your list of music you gotta listen to. I like to get lost in that experience. Like I want it to basically allow me to zone out, especially when I'm at home or I'm just relaxing. I wanna be able to like just completely engulf myself in the music in which I'm listening to. I wanna get lost in the song. Slow Burn by Casey Musgraves. Listen to the acoustic guitar and how the AirPods Max can make it sound both warm and bright. That is not easy to do. Paired with Casey's voice, this is an awesome demo track. And again, these tracks sound good on the AirPods Max, but these are good for any headphones that you wanna test out. If you have a pair of headphones you love, hit the links down below, Spotify and Apple Music, and just sit back and give these tracks a listen. Now, when it comes to spatial audio in the AirPods Max, here are a few scenes that you'll wanna check out that will be super impressive and shows what spatial audio can really do. I know there's a lot of Dolby Atmos stuff, and I know Disney Plus recently got updated, but I actually had a real good experience with episode one of Prison Break, just because it's 5.1 audio, but it starts off with Michael getting tatted up, and you hear the dialogue, you hear the, the tattoo gun, and it's a great way to move your head and hear it shift here, or move your head and hear it shift here, or do a 180, and then all of a sudden, the dialogue and everything goes to the back of your head. The movie Gravity. From about the 10 minute mark to the 13 minute mark, listen to the way the dialogue moves around your head. They're trying to give you the feeling of being in outer space, and obviously the average person doesn't know if that's exactly how it would sound in outer space, but listening to that area of the movie on these headphones, on the AirPods Max and spatial audio, it's just a head trip. Gravity. The audio design in Gravity is out of this world figuratively and maybe literally. It's a movie that takes place in space, which is infinite space, but you have to feel suffocating. You have to feel claustrophobic and, and it's super scary. The Mandalorian season two, episode two, just watch the opening scene of that episode. You have the pod racer chase, you have the battle scene, the sound effects along with the musical track. Listen to how it all comes together on these headphones. Ford versus Ferrari, start at one hour, 26 minutes and go through one hour and 28 minutes. That two minute scene, listen to the engine of the car, listen to the tires screeching as the car's whipping back and forth through your head. Blade Runner, completely different audio design and you have to get all of that through our ears. So the best use case for me has been wireless. And actually my favorite use case with these right now has been weirdly enough from a music production aspect where I'll use Bear Dynamics wired, work on a track, air, then airdrop it to my phone and reference that track wirelessly with these. But I think from a movie theater experience, that's the strongest point, like if you care about movies. And to have that on a plane or to travel or to not deal with wires, I think that is a huge plus. For me, the best way I would describe these is like an experience. And much like you would go to a movie theater to get that sub, to get that things flying past your head in the Dolby Atmos, in, in a way you're getting Dolby Atmos-like audio in a pair of wireless headphones. Granted, there are limitations where it's iOS and iPhone and iPad. And I think if they can bring it to Apple TV, that's why you buy these headphones. Horror movies, 80% of the horror movies is the sound. That's, that's how we get scared. And then Simpsons, Futurama, 80% of that is eating noises. If you're gonna watch something like The Mandalorian or anything that's got that full Dolby surround, these are gonna take full advantage of that and 
it is something that you have to experience to really understand. I also love really messing around with spatial audio and really just being able to give people a demonstration of what these actually sound like. So I try and cover all the bases, you know, we're lucky to be able to goof around and have fun with this stuff. Um, for $550, you better test everything possible. I personally feel after, after seeing a lot of comments, reviews out there, that a lot of people seem to miss some of the extra features. It's almost like we'll call out what the AirPods Max are missing when compared to the Sony's or the Bose or any other, like they have this, AirPods Max does not, but those same features, articles, reviews, don't talk about the things that the AirPods Max have that the others don't. So I'm curious what, how, how you feel, again, your own personal opinion, how it fits into your life. Things like fast user switching, things like the spatial audio, instantly pairing to all your devices when you when you first set them up on one, the 10 core chips in there that take the, the 256 bits of audio and kind of reprocess them for the specific hardware of the headphones. There's, there's a lot in there that is unique to these headphones, do you find that those things add value for you or that they're just kind of superfluous features? No, I think for me they do, but I've always been someone who tries to use things like they're intended to be used. And I think when you do that, then you see the use case value. It's the same way I would tell someone to use Final Cut like it was intended to use. Like don't treat it like Premiere. And that's very similar with these, right? Like. That was my biggest thing is people are getting these and the first thing they do is pop in an aux cord and it's like, can we at least try? Like, can we at least try what they're intended for before we, you know, like, oh, let me run to title and play this flack. And it's like, no, like try spatial audio, bro. And just like have an open mind is all. I love that they're making headphones for just, even high-end headphones for just people. People who shouldn't be punished if they forget to turn them on or off, if they just take them off and put them on a table and walk away. Or if they listen to Spotify or Apple Music streaming, you know, or if they, or if they listen to their stuff, if they prefer Bluetooth, they shouldn't be punished for it. And I think these are the beginning of a new wave of headphones that don't punish you for just being a person and not an audiophile. And that's the most important thing to me is how it sounds overall. Some people like really sharp highs, some people just love bass. Like I know so many people that are like, I just want good bass everything else comes secondary, which is fair because everybody likes something different. Um, I prefer a flat sounder profile, flatter sound profile generally. AirPods, Max, they're, uh, they're a bit crisper, they're a bit sharper on the highs and mids for me, but I still think that they do sound, if we're talking about sound quality alone, incredible. So for me, they come in as like a jack of all trades type of a headphone. In that sense is I can throw any type of genres at these and they're gonna handle it very well. If I wanna be able to listen to music and then quickly switch to watching videos, movies, take a phone call, converse with my family with transparency mode, then this is gonna be the way I wanna roll. The AirPods Max have a really lively and energetic sound and the dynamic EQ does a really good job balancing the different songs. So if you're listening to rock, rap, hip hop, whatever, classical music, again, the Dynamic EQ does a pretty good job of adapting to all those different kinds of tracks. So this headphone really does a great job on any music genre. So basically after listening here, listening there, wearing them here, wearing them there, testing battery life and so forth, I'm able to come to a opinion about the AirPods Max. The caveat is they're really, really good for Apple users because we all know these are for the Apple users and the Apple Gordon sipping the Apple juice, enjoying their Apple ecosystem. Where it really lacks is the mids for me because it could have done a bit better when it comes to mids. But again, this is preferential. It depends to you, on your hearing because for me, sound system depends on your hearing. And my left ear is different from my right ear. So again, it just depends on your preferences. But when it comes to sound quality, continuity, and just how well it works in my current setup, I really have to go with the Apple AirPods Max. So it kind of depends on the situation. It kind of depends on what you want to get out of it, what the mood you're in. And these, I feel like they, they go every direction as much as they can. And I like it when I'm able to hear things within the song that I never noticed before. Like when the quality of the headphones are so good, you're picking up on instruments that you never knew existed in a track that you heard over 50 times. That right there, that's priceless. Thanks, Andrew. Hopefully this isn't too hard to edit. Love you, man. Thanks again. I'll see you on Twitter and text me whenever. Bye. <laughs> All right. I think I'm, uh, 
I think I'm done here. Okay. Okay, and now to play us out, what does that what does that mean to play us out? I don't know what that means to play us out. What does that mean? No. We'll do it live. It's C Kid with his thoughts on the AirPods Max, and you may want to listen to this part of the video through your favorite pair of headphones as he's taking us out in only a way that he can. I figured what better way to tell you guys than telling him my own style. Let's talk about it. First off, man, shout out to Andrew Edwards for having me on talking headphones, not going backwards. I play two types of content. It's music and then there's movies. Uh -huh. My favorite two genres, I'll be vibing cause it's so groovy. Let's see. First up is hip hop and that R&B. It's quality, I listen when beats to a certain degree. Now it's cold, I'll wait and see if it sounds good or it's muffled. If no struggle, then I won't buy another or shuffle. Next up, let's discuss these movies. Now this is different on AirPods Max. What I'm looking for is deliverance. Action film, horror film. You name it, it's my preference But the sound has to be immersive Or mainly effortless Hot explosions I wanna feel I'm in the action Surround sound experience To me is the main attraction My face will say it all Just be facial reaction No lies being told Man, this is real And ain't no capping Now be Set of a movie Listen to my music Monday or Tuesday <laughs> Set of a movie Listen to my music Monday or Tuesday Woo! It's like being on the set of a movie it's movies on Monday, music on Tuesday. I thank y'all for having me. This was a movie. Man, it's C-Kid. I'm out. It was a doozy. Squad.